All right, let's talk about Subtool Master. Uh, but first, there's something I want to go over that I uh, keep forgetting to go over. Um, underneath the preferences, if you go down to miscellaneous, uh, by default, a UZ folders button is turned on. What that's going to do is every time you want to save a Z tool or a brush, it's going to go to the default ZBrush folders that are in uh, the 3.5 folder. Um, if you don't want that to happen, go ahead and uncheck this or uh, unclick it. And if you want it to always be like that whenever you start ZBrush, go ahead and store your config. And that way, um, if say you need to save a Z tool and you save it to a folder, and then you need to export a texture, it's going to export to that last folder you had open. Uh, so that might save you some time depending on your workflow. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about Subtool Master now. To get the Subtool Master, just go to your Z plugin menu up here at the top, and there's a sub menu called Subtool Master. Just click that open, and you'll see a Subtool Master button. Go ahead and click it, and that'll bring up the Subtool Master palette. And let's go down here, and we'll discuss what all these mean. Uh, multi append. Go ahead and click that. It's going to navigate to uh, a folder, and we'll go to uh, make sure go to our Subtool Master folder where I have this all set up. Um, multi-append is basically, instead of uh, doing it the old-fashioned way, which I've been showing you, which is to load an OBJ or load a Z tool and then append it to your subtool, or as a subtool to a pre-existing tool, uh, and doing that over and over and over again, you can actually do that in one fell swoop. So we'll go ahead and bring these in, and you can control-click uh, different ones, you don't have to select everything, uh, and you can pick and choose between Z tools and OBJs if you'd like. Uh, so if you have a bunch of base OBJ meshes that you want to bring in all at once, this is a good way to do that. Go ahead and grab all these, and we don't need the teeth of the body. We'll go ahead and hit open with all those selected. What that's going to do is load all those individual Z tools and append them to the pre-existing one that I had selected. And there you go. So with all those appended, um, I'm not appending all his gear just for demonstration purposes, but you could do it with all of it. Um, you'll notice that they're in varying degrees of res. Um, this one isn't high. This one is its lowest res it looks like, and these are all subdivided. So what we can do is we'll go ahead and open up Subtool Master again, and we'll go ahead and do high res all. That's going to make all of our uh, visible subtools the highest res. And alternatively, uh, the low res all is a good button to go ahead and press if you've got a ton of subtools. Go ahead and press the low res all and save your uh, Z tool, and it might save you some uh, space on the file size. So that was a high res all button. Let's go into uh, Subtool Master again. And duplicate is the same thing as doing a clone and append, hitting the clone button on a subtool and appending it. Uh, mirror, go ahead and close that. Select this head down here, and we'll go back into Subtool Master, and we'll click Mirror, and it's going to give us some options. Um, you can append it as a new subtool and mirror it across whichever axis you want, or uh, you can merge it into one subtool and mirror it. And there's um, ways you can go to your uh, deformation menu and mirror and merge and reconstruct subdivision history or you can just hit this button and it'll do all that for you it'll give you a warning this isn't that many polygons uh, especially not for r3 um, but if you are getting a huge amount of polygons uh you know be careful if you're uh if your computer can't handle it my computer handled this just fine so i'll go ahead and hit okay all right what that did was it mirrored and appended uh the head that i had selected and these are actually merged into one subtool. So if I hit X, I'll go across the X axis and I can sculpt on these or paint on these across the X axis. And they have their subdivision level still maintained. So that was mirroring. Let's we'll see what else we got underneath the uh, Subtool Master menu. Uh, merging is the same thing as using the uh, merge. So uh, it'll actually merge anything that's visible. If you click merge, you can. Uh, there's some options in here to uh, preserve the existing polygroups. Uh, you can merge, and you can also merge and delete extra subtools that are hidden. Uh, we'll go ahead and cancel out of that because we don't need to merge anything right now. Back in here, fill. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, all your existing, uh, all your, sorry, visible subtools, uh, if you do fill, it'll actually fill it with the color, which is selected right here. It'll fill it with a white in this case, all of your subtools that are visible. Uh, or you can do material, and say you wanted to fill all your um, subtools that are visible with a certain material, you can do that here. Or you can do both, so you can fill it with a color or and a material at the same time. Um, also, over here, you'll see as I roll over this a little, uh, it highlights this box. Um, if you turn this to a, if you click on it and it turns to a gray, that's the same thing as turning off your little brushes over here. That's basically taking the colorize off of your subtools. So if I have this on gray, it'll make all the visible subtools uncolorized. So it'll go back to the default, uh, whatever I have a matte cap red wax here. 
Um, you can also do the opposite by clicking it again. They'll be uh, rainbow colored, and what that'll do is actually have the same effect as turning these little brushes on or uh, making all your subtools colorize that are visible. So uh, we'll go ahead and make that gray, and we'll uncolorize all of our visible subtools. And as you can see there, uh, it didn't delete our polypaint. Our polypaint's still there, but if we go up here to the body, for example, that brush is off now. So if I turn that brush on, that'll bring the polypaint back. But uh, sometimes it's useful, especially if you're doing like I was talking about earlier. Uh, your composite layers in Photoshop, or just to uh, see uh, sculpting, you can do that. And you can go in here and change your materials, and it'll uh, update for all the subtools. Moving right along, let's go back into the Subtool Master and keep making our way down the list. Uh, export, that'll actually export all of the visible subtools at their current subdivision level uh, as separate OBJs into the folder that you specify. Uh, this can be useful for exporting a bunch of high reses that you want to bake to, or you can do a low res all and then do an export, and you can export uh, all of your subtools, all your visible subtools as uh, all their base meshes out. Uh, so that's useful. Uh, delete invisible, uh, we'll delete the ones that aren't visible. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, high res and low res all, we already went over. Uh, scale offset, I had to look this up, it sets the scale to one and XYZ offset to zero for all of your subtools. So if you're having problems uh, with that, uh, definitely check that out. I haven't really had to use that yet, but it's there if you need it. Uh, layers to subtools. Um, I believe this changes the intensity of the visible subtool layers um, to the settings of the originally selected subtool that you have. Again, I looked that up. I don't ever use this button, uh, but it's there if you need it. Uh, shift up will uh, shift all of your visible subtools up to the top, and that's useful if you want to take like uh, all of his lower body stuff and shift them up all at once. If you've got 30 or so subtools. Uh, you can do that uh, all at once with multiple subtools as opposed to, you know, going over here and clicking the up button over and over again for a bunch of different subtools. This will do it as a group. Down here, show hide all is pretty self-explanatory, and you can also invert the visibility of your subtools. Um, at the very bottom here, if you click this and then go up to the Z plugin, you notice you've got a bunch of buttons right here. Uh, just like assigning hotkeys to brushes, what you have to do is hold down Control and then, uh, for example, we'll click Multi-Append. And then we'll assign uh, Control alt m I suppose. And that'll have a little uh, pop-up there that says the hotkey for multi-append has been set to alt Control m So by clicking that little button, that little uh, version button at the very bottom of the Subtool Master will bring this up. And then you can assign hotkeys to a bunch of uh, Subtool Master uh, options. So that way you don't have to open Subtool Master every time you want to do something. You can just assign a hotkey to it. Uh, and if you, you know, just click on these, they'll disappear if you don't want to set hotkeys for them. Um, so that's Subtool Master in a nutshell, and it's got a bunch of uh, really good functionality in there uh, that I use a lot. So uh, definitely check that out.